Well, I'm going to have a shorty today. Although every time I say it's going to be a shorty, it turns into 20 minutes. So we'll see how well I do. Um, today, getting the uh, 19 ready to spread fertilizer. And I really need to come up with a new nickname for this thing because for the longest time it was the 19. And then the 1950T showed up. So then this became the 55 and then the 1950T became the T. Well, now we got the Super 55, so you can't call us the 55 anymore, so now i got to come up with something different. So, um, anyway, got to change the PTO over to 540 RPM. we got the 1,000 shaft in it now. And it seems like, if I remember right, Chris Lulzy actually did a video on how to do this a while back, I think. But we'll do it so, it, so we got one over here anyhow, so... Chen, you can never have too many five gallon buckets because it's just perfect right right that should have you looking fairly decent at it so you need a ratchet with a 916 socket and a long extension makes it easiest and you pop these four bolts off And this is going to take the shield and the retainer plate that's behind it. There's a spacer plate that goes in between the shield and the bearing. And technically you can have this PTO in without the shield if you've got an oversized uh, PTO yoke. I know some of the new New Holland balers are like that. They got a uh, CV joint instead of a universal on them and the P front yoke is massive on them. Sometimes they don't necessarily fit under the old style shield. So there's the PTO shield and there's the, there's the spacer plate. This thing's a little greasy. Now, before you pull the shaft, I just use a little crescent wrench because it's easier. But you pop that bolt loose and back it out. Back this bolt out, and then the shift rail is right here. Hopefully, you can see it. You thread the bolt into the shift rail so you got something to hang on to. And right now, the rail is in that's for a thousand for 540. You pull it out, so you pull the shaft part way out. And if you spin it, if you spin the shaft and pull out on the shift rail at the same time, it'll pop into 540. And then you pull the shaft out. And the 1000 RPM shaft is shorter than the 540. And in order for this thing to shift into 540, there's a spring loaded uh, plug back there. Well, I got, well. It's more of a piston, but we'll call it a plug because that's what it looks like from this angle. That has to be pushed all the way in in order for this thing to shift all the way into 540. That way you can't leave it shifted into a thousand and have the 540 shaft in and damage a piece of equipment. And feels like we're shifted. Oh yeah, we're shifted. So, you take the bolt out, and you put it back in. And because there's no air pressure, that thing's sealed pretty, really good, and air pressure will keep popping the thing out, but it, no big deal. It'll, it'll go in once you put the bolt back in. And you tighten your clamp bolt back down and jam it. And you put your PTO shield back on.
and if you've got one of these and it hasn't been shifted between 540 and 1000 for a while that that plug or that uh, plunger back in there tends to stick and going from 1000 to 540 I remember it's going from a thousand to five or five forty to a thousand isn't bad, but if that thing gets sticky from not being used, going from a thousand back to five forty is a bitch because it's hard to push the plunger back in. Um, the very first time that we did it on this tractor was right after I bought my stock chopper. That was the first thousand RPM piece of equipment we bought, and shifted it into a thousand. It went just fine. Or don't take that back. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure shifting into a thousand was no issue. But then we went to switch it back to 540, and we had a bear of a time because that plunger was stiff. And it took uh, like two or three shaft changes to get it working. But after that, it's been fine ever since. There's nothing wrong with it. They just get sticky if you don't use them. So, if you've ever got one of these things, well, like this tractor, probably it, it had that thousand or that 540 shaft in it for as long as we know of. I'm. A, it came off of a dairy farm. Chances are it was a big tra tractor. Chances are it ran chopper. But, but at that point in time, choppers could still be 540 or a thousand. They could go either way depending on how they were ordered. So. Um, yeah, that if you ever have issues shifting them, the best thing you could do is, um, just like take a half hour or so and just, sh just switch shafts and shift the rail around a few times to get, get that mechanism in there limbered back up. And once you do that, you'll never have issues with it again. Um, like I say, I, I shift sha or move sh chain shafts in this and the, the 1950T is the same way. The only difference is on the T, the PTO guard stays on and there's a snap ring that holds the shaft in. But uh, the shift rail and everything else is exactly the same on the 1950T or 1950 for that matter. Um, but like I say, I, I shift, I change these shafts two or three times a year depending on what I'm doing right now, I'm spreading fertilizer. If I go to run the chopper, I'll shift back to a thousand RPM shaft. Um, I've never had any issues after that first time we, we swap shafts around. So it's not even an, it's not even an inherent thing. It's just, if they don't get used, they get sticky. So yeah, that's how you do that. And this is a good opportunity to poke fun at the deer guys because the one thing you'll notice that didn't happen on this when I pulled that shaft out was all the transmission oil didn't come didn't come draining out of it. Because on a deer, you got to play fucking lightning hands to swap shafts because it's not a sealed chamber and rear end fluid will start dumping out. So, um, that whole thing, there's a seal in there and, and the stub shaft is in there and that's just a oilless chamber basically to hold the bearing to support the shaft and everything in there is free of oil so you can take your time swapping shafts um and this is one area where ih and moline had it down because they just had a dual speed pto and they're both right there and you didn't have to worry about swapping shafts but the one thing oliver had that nobody else did is oliver actually has a three speed pto you got 540 and a thousand on this shaft and then if you pull this plate off there is the same uh, drive splines in here on a, on a hollow stub shaft. And this gives you engine speed PTO that turns the opposite direction. Um, and what that's for is like most of your water or irrigation pumps and stuff that need to run at a high RPM like that are designed to run the opposite direction of PTO equipment and they run at a high RPM so what that does is this is just a straight shaft right well this is the live shaft that drives the PTO 
um, it's a straight cut it's a straight shaft right through to the motor and whatever engine RPM you're running is the RPM you'll get here so um, and all you got to do is pop those two bolts out it's the same bolt pattern as here you pull the shield and the shaft out put it up here put this plate down here and there you have all three PTO speeds you'd ever need um, so yeah not quite as good as IH having IH and Moline just having both speeds right there but uh, definitely better than deer where you lose your entire rear end reservoir if you're not quick enough on the gun and deer guys always like to say well you're just parking on a hill well I don't want to have to go find a damn hill every time I want to change PTO speed I just want to get it done so yeah jab jab deer guys and I guess since this is her debut with the duels on it she looks good with uh, deep tread sats on there and it's wide as hell it's almost 12 foot wide with the duels on there so yep we got a little bit of rain last night that uh, actually technically I probably took still could go spread because it doesn't feel it doesn't appear that we got a whole lot of rain it was just enough to make the top greasy but we got more coming in tonight hopefully that doesn't amount to much if I get tomorrow to dry like I if tomorrow or if the rain tonight doesn't amount to much and it dries off enough tomorrow let's see what's today's tuesday tomorrow will be wednesday so hopefully thursday i can start spreading fertilizer but they keep putting more damn rain in the forecast so but i could have all my fertilizer now that, since i got this week off i could have all my fertilizer spread in two days that'd be nice and then when the weather finally straightens out all i gotta do is start fitting ground and planting and everything would be out of the way so like I say, hopefully I can. Hopefully we can get in the field, and start spreading my my bulk fertilizer this week. So that's the plan. But time will tell. So anyway, I guess that's all for this one. We'll catch y'all on.